Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special edition of Journey to Success Radio. I'm your host, Taylor Tagg. We have some very fine guests with us today in a special edition tribute to our founder of Journey to Success, Tom Cunningham. Tom was a very special person to most of us here listening, and uh, he passed away about almost a month ago. And so we want to put together a special show uh, for him and get some of his greatest friends and colleagues uh, on here to be able just to talk about Tom and and what uh, he meant to us as a friend. And we just want to go forward with that. So uh, welcome to everyone here to joining the Journey to Success Radio Network. And uh, we welcome in uh, Barry Burleson today and Timothy Chim and also Diana Denninger to our program. So welcome, welcome guys. How are you today? Thanks, super. Very well, thank you. Very well, too. Well, you know, this is just a a special tribute to Tom and uh, his his amazing work with all of us. He affected us in in so many beautiful ways and and differently, too. And so uh, just go ahead and jump in and and have a few minutes, uh, talk about Tom and, and what he meant to you. Diana, you want to start us off? Okay, ladies first, ladies first, (laughs) I'll do it. (laughs) You know, we started with, okay, there was Brad Schultz, you, Taylor, um, and there was a group of us, and I was that like six years ago that we would have our Compass Mastermind, and we were doing this, this, you know, we really wanted this enormous project of people that could have this one-stop place for personal, you know, and professional development. And so, you know, I was, you know, from, from your guys group, then you, you know, contacting me to be the parenting uh, expert. And so we had all these, you know, branches covered of, you know, the parenting and the relationships and, and the success coaching and the memories of my first meetings with Tom, you know, I didn't even realize that he had the, the, the rheumatism. I mean, I don't think I knew for the first couple of years that he even had this. Wow. Because of the presence that he had on our international Skype call. So I live in Italy. Um, there was someone from the Far East. There were a bunch of you guys from uh, you know, the States and Canada. And he, he came off with just such, okay, and we're going to get done, and yes. And his, I mean, he just walked his talk ever since I've known him in a lot of different, you know, both, both the visual calls um, that I've had with him and, you know, various radio interviews, always walked his talk and, and had this ability to, you know, keep people on track in a very fatherly, loving, supportive You know, really, and and I told him so many times, like, you know, you are the guy that we can really count on. And having a relationship, you know, because I ask myself this very often. I say, you know, sometimes it feels like for work, some of my best friends I've never even met in person because of the synchronicity and the connection that I've had with so many people in the world online, like you guys, like Tom, that have really become such treasured friends. Uh, in moments like this, uh, we know with Tom's passing, that you know, I ask myself, it's, it's so hard when you have a feeling for someone to then not be there like physically to really support the family and the loved ones that take on. So, you know, this is, this is the, you know, the reason for us meeting together is to, to maintain the, the spirit of Tom Cunningham in Journey of Success Radio because the, so many lives that he impacted, we are going to, you know, continue on with the interviews in, in his name to, to really keep, keep this moving. And I remember in one of the last Facebook posts that he, um, that he had, and he said, I'm scared. And I believe that was the first time in the six years that I've known him, despite the physical challenges that he revealed later, that was the first time I've ever read that I'm scared. And I had this sort of sixth sense, 
Um, and I told my kids, I was like, that's just really not Tom. Um, and I had a, a strange feeling. And, you know, you know, when, when we all have those strange feelings and, and, you know, just the languaging we have, even in our family is, well, you know, you know every soul chooses their journey. And, you know, I guess he had chosen then to be relieved of, of the physical pain. But, you know, Tom, Tom, in my even professional life, he wrote one of the most beautiful, you know, Amazon reviews for my, my book. And, he, and even in a call, he even said that, Diana, of the 23 self-help books that I've read this year, yours was by far the best because it took me out of the normal, you know, left brain self-help to do kind of thing into the right brain. I really felt I was there going on the journey you took me through. And so, you know, I have both admiration for Tom's professional uh, vastness of knowledge and, and this, this love that he, he gave us all as, uh, as co-authors in some of the Journey to Success books. And um, yeah, so this is, you know, even stepping up publicly and saying, yeah, I'll be around to help do interviews for all the future Journeys to Success radio books. So we're going to keep this going. Tom's going to push us along. <laughs> Absolutely. And for everybody listening, uh, like Diana said, we are uh, committed to continuing Journey to Success Radio and uh, the brand that, that Tom started and was so passionate about. We have uh, collectively have over 500 interviews to date and I think over 35,000 listens all time in just six years. So that's, that's a pretty good clip and, and we'll see what happens in the future. But we're going to continue to have guests on here uh, or involved with the Pulling Hill and then also just have a success story that they want to share because this, this was about the journey to success in whatever business or whatever avenue you were in. So we're going to keep it going for time and uh, good things are going to happen because of it. Gary, how about you? You got something to, to share about old timer? Well, I do. And I only knew Tom briefly for about a year. And obviously his presence on the internet is quite pervasive or obiquitous, you might say. He's, he was the best or most well-known Napoleon Hill Foundation instructor online, right? So it was, uh, if you Google Napoleon Hill, you'll c come up with his, uh, his name and his website, which is how I found him. Because I was struggling with my, my business, and I had, as a matter of fact, a year ago today, I received my certification from the Napoleon Hill Foundation as a certified instructor. So I was wanting to promote myself, promote my business, my website, and I just felt overwhelmed. And so I contacted Tom uh, to be uh, my coach and mentor, because he obviously had uh, created quite a, a, a business with his certification and his knowledge about Napoleon Hill. And he, he agreed to coach me. And during that time, he offered me the opportunity to be in uh, a collaborative book, which I agreed to do. So I wrote a chapter in the book, Positive Mental Attitude, uh, which really boosted my self-esteem and confidence. And from there, uh, you know, our weekly coaching calls, he was helping me to figure out my target market, which I was, wasn't quite sure about. I thought it was prisoners and inmates because I was working with that group of people in a ministry. But I, I finally realized, and he was the one that helped me, we masterminded this realization of my target market being young adults, high school age, college age, 20-somethings who are just starting out in life, who need these principles and this knowledge and this wisdom so that years later, they're not back like so many of us do saying, darn, I wish I knew then what I know now, right? So that's kind of the direction my business took and my marketing took. And I attribute all of that to Tom because he was instrumental in helping me realize these things. And then, of course, I had the opportunity he presented me to write in another book uh, that, uh, that came up just a few months later, and I took, I took that opportunity as well. 
And so being in a couple of collaborative books and being in the, in the jail ministry, I approached the guys in my class to do a collaborative book because they have such little bits of money to buy commissary and things. I said, you know what, guys, if you want to write a chapter in a book, and 10 people, and we figured out that we would write a chapter around the idea of the principle learning from adversity and believe me, these guys have learned from their, <laughs> from their failures. And so I said, you know what, I'll give all of you the profit. I, I don't care to make any money off of this. I will, I'll get it published because I've done that before. My wife had a number one best-selling book a few years ago. But anyway, and, and it was all because of Tom that these ideas from infinite intelligence just came to, to me and to us through our mastermind. And uh, he was such a blessing to my life. That's warm. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate that. Tim, how about you, brother? Oh, yeah. Tom has been or had been in many pieces of uh, my uh, life, especially uh, when uh, we met in uh, Ireland. And I believe it was 2012, if I'm not mistaken, in Ireland. Uh, when we are coming back from the trip, we had a long, long conversation. Uh, and he just like, the guy was just like, I wouldn't let you go, <laughs> Tim, because you had such a, uh, a great story to tell. So he was just like, his mouth was never stopped for how many hours on the plane from Ireland to New York. So he was flying from Ireland to New York and then I, you know, had to uh, leave him. He was flying uh, on to Toronto at that time. But it started with, uh, I, I uh, became, uh, well, actually, I started learning uh, the uh, course, the Science of Success course online with uh, Dr. Wright. And then I met Tom because he popped up on that internet all the time. He said, Tom, uh, you know, I mean, you are one of the, uh, mentors there and can you uh, help me through all of these things so he have helped me through all of that process learning from the very beginning I met him at the time that we went to Ireland but to make the story short one of the things that Tom uh, had uh, impacted my life was that he encouraged me from the very beginning uh, I had a dream that I wanted to bring that science of success class to a uh, course to my uh, uh, countrymen, uh, which is Cambodia. You guys know that I'm from Cambodia. Uh, so I said, Tom, uh, is it possible, man, that I could do this? Tom said, Tim, from what the story you told me so far, <laughs> nothing can stop you, brother. I said, you got to do it. <laughs> And I'll help all the way, right? So you know, when two positive minds met, and I think, oh man, that's it, you know. So I was talking uh, in front of the group uh, on Ireland, and everybody was. Some of them were crying. Tom was crying. Everybody was so emotional uh, in the story that I told. So back then, he encouraged me uh, to go ahead, to do, go ahead. But my initial uh, motive was to to encourage other people that never seen, never studied this course before. So he made that special impact with me that I would never stop. And after that, he uh, got me involved with this radio, uh, Teller, the uh, Journey to Success radio. And I was the guy who behind all the editing. <laughs> Not all, but most of the editing. He said, Tim, <laughs> edit this thing for me. So I used this editing, editing tool, put the, all the, you know, cut off some uh, thing and put the beginning and the end of that, uh, uh, that journey of success from back then. It was, there was no music or anything. Tom came up with the music. So I was putting in the end and the end and then cut off some basic mistake that people made all that in and we worked together and I had a chance to I had many chances of interviewing people on the radio and also uh, people that speak Khmer which is Cambodian so we put a few shows in there 
So, uh, you know, I love this science uh, of success thing that we learned together and the radio that Taylor and Tom put together. But the most thing that impacted my life was Tom dared to help me. We went to Cambodia exactly two years. Two years, right, Taylor? We went to Cambodia on April 9, 2016. Yeah. And he died two years after that on April 9. Oh. He is. And he impressed Taylor so much that he had to eat <laughs> tarantulas <laughs> and crickets and bugs in Cambodia. Yeah, no, you, you've probably oh, seen yeah, the right? video of Tom, but uh, when he learned that he could eat a tarantula and several insects, he just got this <laughs> laser focus that he was going to bound and determine oh. to eat a tarantula. <laughs> and, and Tim was just all about that. And I was, I had gotten sick on the trip. And so there was no way I was going to touch a tarantula at that point. But Tom just dove right into those things. I think he ate about 20, 20 insects at least. It was just like, it was just like so delicious to him. That was his lunch. That was his lunch that day. <laughs> good, a good set of protein for Tom. Yeah, those, those, uh, those at the moment that stayed in my, um, uh, the, uh, up until he, I can't, I can't go one day without seeing his face. I'm telling you, I'm like, what's the matter with this thing? You know, he's, he's like my own brother and, 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 and it's like, I can't see, you know, we went to uh, Toronto with Taylor, Taylor and I went and I went on top of, uh, onto uh, his balcony looking out and talked to Kim and everything. I said, oh, this is, can't be, you know, I was, but before that, um, he, we were in constant contact on email, on email. And I, I, like Diana, I knew that Tom was sort of at the end of his uh, PMA kind of thing, you know? And he, he um, confessed it to me and I said, Tim, I can't go on with this anymore. And I was trying to encourage him, I asked, me a teller to go to Toronto to see him. Uh, and he just said, no, don't come. Don't come. That's like about a week before he passed, right? Yeah, teller? Yeah, that, yeah. I think that was yeah, a couple weeks before. Yeah, so he said, don't come. So we never came and meet. And I, it was uh, one of those things that I wanted to see him before something happened. But uh, you know, he impacted the whole country of Cambodia now. He did. We brought uh, the idea of me asking him, he encouraged me to bring this class to Cambodia. We are now teaching hundreds and hundreds of students in Cambodia about science of success. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's impacted children in that country. I'm, te I'm teaching these classes two times a week, spending about 250 hours a year putting out voluntarily teaching the people that are now so to say thirsty for this kind of uh, uh, success, um, a science of success uh, theories. So that's what I'm doing and I am honored to know him and work with him, write book with him, read that together, this book you guys, right? So um, now we are missing one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. And Tim, you might want to mention, you know, the project that has, you know, surfaced since Tom's death uh, about, you know, what we have for plans in Cambodia. Yeah. Um, uh, at the time that his dad, um, after that, or his wife, Kim, hello, Kim, you're watching. Uh, Kim was really say, Tom has been talking about me and my son on daily basis. She couldn't stand <laughs> being happy that, that he was asking about me. He said, okay, well, you know, Kim, I would be there. You know, I would be there at his uh, funeral, no question. Make the decision right away with Taylor to go. And then she said, uh, on Tom's behalf, uh, I would like to um, donate any anything that came through the funeral to one of his um, uh, favorite uh, charity work. So what happened was I introduced this idea to my fellow in Cambodia. Now we are trying to build a school 
in his memoir, in his name. It will be quote unquote, Tom too tall building or Tom too tall school or science of success or amazing school or some of that nature. We are trying to do that now. And uh, I'm making this known because the uh, teller, uh, we in, you know, uh, uh, we are in good terms of trying to get that done, me and Kim. And I think it can be done. It will be done. Everything is all set to go. Not all set, but the land is given to us. The most important thing was that the land, you know, the land is quite expensive in Cambodia now. But we got that squared away. Mm. Yeah, we got the land. People in that village, the children, hundreds of children and all that, they gather together. They talk their mother, their father, and their group into it to get the land. So, so we got the land, we got the place to build. Now we are raising fun little by little. We haven't set up the whole group to do it yet, but I'm bringing this in, in Tom's name. In Tom's name, he encouraged me, and I will do whatever I can to make that happen with that man over there, the trio. <laughs> uh, well, my, my suggestion, just to break up the 9th of April kind of thing, why don't you make sure it happens on the 19th of June, because that's Tom's birthday. <laughs> so what can you yeah. what can you get moving? You know, at the time of this recording, which is May, what can you get moving by? You know, in the next month. So something exciting about you know the birth of the school and the birth of Tom, uh, Tom Tuchel School. Yes. yes. Great right. suggestion, Diane. That's that's a wonderful suggestion. Yeah. Let me, let me say a couple of things about Tom because I it's uh, you know he had a tremendous impact on me as well and. Um, he was just a wonderful, wonderful guy. I met Tom in 2011 on the Napoleon Hill certification trip, also in Ireland. And uh, we, we got a chance to spend some time together. And I just had this feeling that I was going to do a project with him down the road. I didn't know what it was or how it was going to come about. And I told him, I said, Tom, we're going to work on a project together. I don't know what it is. I just know that it's going to happen. He said, all right, I'll, I'll take you at your word. We'll see what happens. And so I think after the following year, when he met Tim and heard Tim's story, that he got excited. And I finally, I think it was in 2013, I said, Tom, it's time for us to do our project. How, how about we write a book together? Because I knew that Tom had not officially told his story about rheumatoid arthritis and, and all the great things that, that had happened because of that. And then also, also the, the tough adversity he had to face most of his life. He said, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. I got this guy named Tim Chim I also want to include. And Tom, being the great connector he is, you know, I said, that's great. Let's all three of us, let's think about writing this book. So uh, we started to put it together. And I think we got turned down by f four or five editors who, who wouldn't touch our stories because our, our stories were so different from each other. Yet we needed somebody to kind of put it together around this common theme of overcoming adversity and defeat. And so Tom ended up finding uh, his friend, Loria, who was an editor, and she took on the project and did just a marvelous job of making it like one cohesive uh, theme out of three very, very different stories. And so I think and we published it in 2016, and it was just a wonderful, a wonderful thing. I know Tom was very proud of that book. Uh, when, we, when we went to his apartment after the funeral, uh, he had a stack of books sitting on his desk. He had one copy of each volume of the Journey to Successes that he had put together in a stack, and Adversity to Advantage was sitting on the top of it, on the top, right. on top of the stack. And Kim asked us to open the book up. She wanted both of us to sign it, so Tim opened the, the first page and I had signed that book, I'd signed the book already to Tom. And I realized what had happened. The first copy of Adversity to Advantage came to me because I was the quote publisher. So I got the first copy and I decided to mail that first copy to Tom. I said, you know what? He deserves the first copy. Mm -hmm. So I mailed it to him and that was the one, that was the copy sitting on top of that stack. So I thought that was a, a really beautiful thing. Tom was a, he was a great connector of people. He, he liked to bring people together, but he was also pretty sneaky about it too. 
<laughs> he invited Tim and me and several other people to speak on a stage in Toronto. We got there and he gave up his own personal time on the stage to let us speak. But he didn't manage to tell any of the event organizers that we were going to be there. <laughs> so we ended up going up on the stage. Oh, boy. And nobody knew it. And I think he got into a little bit of trouble on that one. <laughs> and I think he did it a couple yeah. more times, too, maybe at uh, Tony Rubaleski's event as well. But he was kind of sneaky about that. But he wanted to just – he wanted to bring as many people together as he could because that's that was his job, was not only the the – inspirer and motivator but he was just a great connector of people that was just one of his his great talents so i always appreciate that about him as well wow that's beautiful yeah there are so many fun stories especially you guys that have met him in person and you know my 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 question i wanted to ask uh you know gary well do you do you miss your weekly your weekly calls with tom you know when you have a year of coaching you know, even though this is, you know, because we're in this online world now and you know, getting back to, you know, what I was saying, there are some people that I talk to once a week, but I've never met them in person. And, you know, so Gary, you're the one that had that consistent relationship with Tom as a, as a coachee. And then all of a sudden you don't have those weekly calls. That's just so, it leaves an empty space. You know, for me, for me, it, it leaves an empty well, space in my Facebook feed because I don't wa listen or I don't read the, the, you know, the Tom's, the, the amount of times that he did, you know, the exercises a day. And we were real. everyone who knew Tom, and then I'll you know, pass the word over again to you, Gary, but everyone who knew Tom became a supporter to him as he was to us because he, he publicly put out his challenges, their exercise challenges or the swimming. And um, uh, yeah, so it was great. Cause he, you know, he, he, he loved being supported. I think he loved supporting people that much, you know, a lot more, but he was really cute in the way he in, enjoyed the leader him also to his, uh, to his accomplishments. It was a very valuable time, time very well spent. And certainly I would encourage anyone listening to find a coach. That was one, one thing I've missed for a long time. Uh, what a difference Tom made. Special thanks goes to friends and colleagues, Diana Denninger, Tim Chim, and Gary Burleson. Part two of the Tom Cunningham tribute continues with friends and colleagues, Brad Zalas, John Wesley Clayton, Chuck Bellina, and wife Kim Cunningham. Well, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you to Kim. Because it's like in a military, the wife is the one get, gets, that gets forgotten. Kim, you're not forgotten, darling. We, we love you. We appreciate you. Um, I know we all love Tom. He was the one in the front, but you're, you're, the, you're the support system. You've always been a support system behind him. And actually, if it wasn't for Kim, I wouldn't even know Tom. So that, I, I, that's I, true. I, I met you I, first. I, I met Kim over in, um, in Italy when we went on a cruise. And then from that, I, I met Tom. So thank you. Thank you very oh, much, wow. Kim. Uh, you know, it has always been my pleasure to stand beside him, behind him, pick him up off the floor, whatever he needed. I was there to serve him. Uh, I'm sure you picked him up off the floor a few times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, lo I love everybody that's on here. It's just been a, a real joy. I'll tell you my experience with Tom Cunningham. And for those of you who are listening in, my name is Brad Zalas. Uh, I wrote the book, Liquid Leadership, and Tom, uh, this is funny, the first time I met Tom was in 2000, 2013 at a Napoleon Hill Summit uh, celebrating Think and Grow Rich, and uh, I was very nervous. I was speaking on second day, and it was uh, about the other Napoleon Hill book, uh, Outwitting the Devil. Love that and book. It, yeah, it's, cool and book. It's, it, you can see why they withheld it for 75 years. And I, I knew about Tom Cunningham, Tom Too Tall Cunningham, 
-hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, um, I look out into the audience. I'm on the stage. There's maybe maybe 150 to 200 people in the room. And uh, as soon as I'm done, this little guy in a black suit just stands up and starts leading the, the charge for a standing ovation for me. And I'm like, and I just stood on stage for a minute because people like me speaking, but that was the first standing ovation I ever received. And it was Tom leading the charge. So afterwards, um, you know, we got to know each other and we hung out. But um, it was years later, I started to notice that Tom was working with different people and he was putting a book together uh, called Journeys to Success. And the cover was in that nascent stage where it, it, it was just playing around and being developmental. And, and I said, Tom, let, let me take over designing that first book. And he was thrilled. And you know how Tom is. We treat Tom like our little brother. Me and John actually work together on the Journeys to Success series. And we always tease Tom like our little brother. Wherever I went with Tom, I said, Tom, can I pick you up and carry you around? And he goes, oh, Brad. <laughs> and he started laughing. I go, but you have to do one thing for me. You have to yell out, God bless us, everyone. Like he was Tiny Tim. So he was our little brother. We teased the heck out of him because we kind of knew he was in pain all the time. And, and I... My, my heart goes out to anybody who has a physical, uh, handicapable, <laughs> handicapable. Uh, yeah, thing about them. Uh, and I guess uh, it's because my first wife, her son was deaf, and I grew up uh, with a, a, nephew, or a niece who had cerebral palsy. So I, I, um, I know they want to be treated like everybody else. They don't want too much help. They want to be able to do it themselves. And so by gosh, I'm going to tease them. Like you're my little brother, <laughs> Tom. Tom and I, I used to I just say, "Hey, how you doing?" Uh, and and the more I got to know him, the more we had we got a chance to work on the Journeys to Success series, and the more I co-hosted with him on the shows, I could personally hear how tired he was and how much pain he was in. And there were some days uh, I could hear on the interviews. He was barely staying in the physical body. He just was agitated, hurt. You know, every joint was aching. And he would do the interviews like a trooper. And all I have to say is, God bless. I am honored to have known Tom, have spent time with him. Uh, and I'm sure Johnny can say the same. Uh, we had a lot of fun with him. And uh, he could be a pain in the butt. He could be a lot of fun. He could be amazing, and he truly was. So, he was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I'll tell you all how I, I got to know Tom. Obviously, it was through Kim who, you know, Kim gave him my information, and, and he was recruiting for this, this book series. Well, before Journey to Success, we, we did the first one, uh, Refusing to Quit. And he contacted me and asked me, hey, do you want to be part of this book? I'm like, yes, let's do it. And then he asked me, John, do you want to be part of the putting together the whole project of the book? So I said, yes, let's, let's do this. So we started working on this, and it kind of stalled, and nothing was really moving forward. So I was like, Tom, just send me all the stuff. I will do it. Tom's like, John, do you know how to do this? I said, no, but I don't care. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so that's where I got involved and kind of become the part where I become because I was like, everybody just send me everything. We're going to make this happen no matter what. So I was part of that first book and uh, my chapter in the book was called uh, how I became a rock star, which I loved. And, uh, and then that's when right after that's when you came aboard, Brad, but, yeah. um, you know, it was great because Brad came on right after, <laughs> and Brad's a very creative guy. He uh, don't tell him that because he'll he'll believe it and he'll get his head all swelled up. But <laughs> great creative guy, and uh, does great work. And when he came on board, it really took our our um, our whole team to a whole new level because it was it was it was me and Tom. And then Jeremy Razor, who, who helped out a little bit in that first book, 
And then after that, Jeremy wasn't with it anymore. And then that's when Brad came aboard. And we basically, us three, is who just took the horns, but put took the bull by the horns, and just drove it forward. Yeah. So and and then we just got better and better through every yeah. project. We just you know took our beatings, just like in any profession, and learned from it, and just made it better and better. Yeah. So I I think we're on top of our game now with this book. Unfortunately, Tom's not with us anymore. To be a part of it, but. You know, Brad and I have spoken, and just so you know, Kim and Taylor too, because you were, you were with uh, Tom from the beginning. But we are dedicated to making this brand the best it can be, and honoring Tom the whole way. And yeah. I don't know if I mentioned. I, don't, I think I may have mentioned to y'all, but Brad and I have spoken, and we're gonna we're gonna create. We're gonna we actually planned this before Tom's passing. We're gonna have a uh seminar and it's going to be called journeys to success and since tom's passing brad and i has decided that we're going to create an award and it's going to be the tom too tall cunningham amazing award and it's going to be dedicated annually to to someone who is persevering through adversity with a positive mental attitude and because that, that entails exactly who Tom too tall Cunningham was and continues to be. Yeah. That's amazing. That, yeah. That, that, that is what, amazing. Yeah. That's what Tom would say. John and I, we have a unique perspective as does Taylor and Timothy Chin um, with Tom, because we weren't just business partners. We were, part of writing teams. We were part of getting these things together. John and I, we kind of looked at Tom, uh, Tom one day. We said, Hey, have you ever thought about making the journeys to success a book series? Cause we were just doing that first book. And he's like, wow, you know, I never thought of that. You know, and it's like, and I said, we could, do, there's all kinds of stuff we could do. You know, we had fun with it and working with, working with Tom, you know, it could be frustrating. We had to yell at Tom a few times, I will be honest. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> because Tom was everywhere. He was all over the place. And John and I were very patient. We would, we would call each other up and go, we have to talk to Tom today. He goes, now what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Tom would get on and, and he'd be sitting there going like a little boy going, okay, guys, sorry, you know. But you're right. It was his, it was his it was his humility and, and his like meekness like a child yeah. that we kind of had to break through with him. Which is it's a double edged sword. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful beautiful thing, but at the same time, it's good. At, again, with the whole Napoleon Hill mastermind concept, that's where we all were yeah. better together. So we we made the oh, team totally. better together. And I, I just wanted to point this out, and, and then I'll I'll be quiet and listen to everybody else uh the the thing that was amazing is tom's been going like what uh, a month now over a month and a half no. and uh on the night we, yesterday was a month uh one month god bless um but <sighs> we each had such a unique skill set that it, it didn't really overlap that much uh, we each had an individual skill set and i've never worked on a team like that before tom truly was our salesperson, our our face of the Journeys to Success brand, um, John. When he when we would get designs back for the interior, it was like precise, and he stayed on top of the business end of this, and I did the brand, the outer the outer look. And I have to tell you, it's only been one month, and we feel very deeply his absence. Um, oh, totally. When, yeah. when it comes to communicating with the group of people, too, I'm like, whoa, like, you just messaged me today, Brad, like, who, who's going to communicate with these people? Because that was Tom's role. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. So, but he was the one that, that reached out to everybody about everything. You know, we went to Tom, said, Tom, we need this. Boom, he was on it. And he, he reached out to everybody. But yeah, yeah we, we got some big little feet to fill. Yeah. Our and shoes. So, yeah. And uh, the, that was the beauty about Tom. Sometimes he didn't know how rough it was going to be. He didn't know. That was, that was his innocence that we talk about. Sometimes he did not know 
that certain things in business, you have to do this, this, or this. And that was a blessing in disguise a lot of times for me and John, because sometimes we could just, we could show him the doorway to something much bigger. And, and it was, it was an honor and it was fun as hell to work with Tom uh, and God bless him wherever he is. Uh, we miss him dearly. He was, he was a great character. I had to, I had to admit, I'm, I first met Tom in November of 2011 at the Napoleon Hill certification. And, uh, you know, he was, he was of course a firecracker back then and he was getting into everybody and talking with everybody. And he was checking on me like the whole trip, even though he didn't even know me, he was checking on me and seeing how I was doing. And then of course, after, after that trip, we, he called me and we talked about, you know, what can we do to include more of the instructors, the polio instructors together. And he came to me and said, Hey, why don't we, start a podcast you would you do that with me i said sure I'll, I'll do that with you and so we sat there we researched uh some of the, the online podcast servers and uh and he of course figured out blog talk radio it sounded good it sounded professional so we went with blog talk radio and got that set up and then we talked about the the names of the show for about a week and of course I had my scratch pad and I had a hundred names on the, on the, the piece of paper and we kept talking about journey, the journey to something. We didn't know what, what the journey was going, but we kept talking about the journey and we finally came up with the journey to success because the Napoleon Hill principles were centered around success, the success principles, the science of success. We knew we were, we were going to interview a lot of certified instructors. So success, you know, sounded, you know, pretty worthwhile. So the journey to success is what it ended up being. And I'll never forget the first week we got it going and we started to, to interview people. And I was kind of slow with my process and I, I was taking my sweet time. So I go in there and click on the dashboard. And I promise you in the first week that we uh, started, Tom had 10 interviews done before I even started my first one. He was all over the place. I mean, he, he was just all in it and he was going like full bore. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I got, I got to, I got to get going here. I got to start interviewing some folks, but that's how the journey success started in 2012. And, uh, with Brad's help and John's help and, and Chuck's help as well. And some, a lot of other great hosts. We've, we've done some good work on the radio program and I know we're going to continue that going forward. So we're definitely going to keep that alive. Hey, Chuck, are you still on? I sure am. Tell us a little bit about your experience and your um, uh, interviews and things. I know you interviewed Brad and myself with Tom once. So tell us about yeah, your experience with Tom. Yeah, so um, in one way, I feel uh, jealous. Um, I have never met Tom personally. Um, Same here. Well, and uh, Kim, Kim, I just want to say that you know uh, you are a godsend and a blessing. And I heard so much about you when I would. Uh, talking with Tom uh, throughout the, I think about a year and a half that I've uh, known him. Um, networking, the, the 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 interaction to connect with other people. You know, I'm talking with Brad and Kim and and uh, John. You know, down in New Orleans, which I might uh, be able to connect with you at the end of the month here. Uh, I was introduced to Tom by a, um, I coach people here in Pittsburgh and uh, one of the ladies I was working with, she's a real estate agent. And she's really into personal development and think and grow rich. And she found Tom on the internet and talked with him. Um, I don't know how much they work together, but she introduced me to him. And um, the gentleman I work with here in Pittsburgh, he's not a Napoleon Hill certified instructor, but he has read think and grow rich 137 times and attributes all wow. of his success wow. to that book. Uh, one dealership that was going bankrupt, they now have seven dealerships and, um, that's his book. So Tom connected with us. Tom actually, uh, we hired Tom and he coached with me. Uh, he coached me, um, over a good solid year. Um, and I, that's where I really got to know him and, you know, where he'd kick my butt because I wasn't doing what he's asking me to do or challenging me to do. And I got to understand how he worked and thought things through like social media and what it meant on Facebook, how to just not be on there as a friend, but to be on there from a business perspective and how to really 
understand what happens behind the scenes when you click here, you share, you make comments or references. Um, he taught me a lot. And uh, then he introduced me to the opportunity to host. And through that, I was able to connect with some really cool people um, out there uh, doing some great things that I got to interview. Yep. And um, through um, somehow Tom connected me. So again, Dion down here in Pittsburgh connected me to Tom in Toronto. And then Tom connected me to uh, a, someone who's a really good friend of mine now. I call him my Baptist preacher buddy out of Texas. Um, he used to be a preacher. Um, but he lives in Pittsburgh, and he, he connected with Tom. Tom connected us together um, here in Pittsburgh. And uh, he, he's a really close friend right now, and we, we've, uh, we're doing a lot of uh, masterminding together and, and trying to develop some stuff here in Pittsburgh. Uh, and that was all Tom's doing. Um, you know, Tom allowed me to connect uh, a gentleman by the name of Thomas Gay to back to Dion. Who, who wrote this this awesome real estate curriculum and with Thomas's background with what he's done in the past and you know they were able to form a partnership and start a business so the connection that Tom has had is is unbelievable and the reach and the people that knew him um, I loved his stories where he talked about you know he dropped something between the, the uh, treadmill and he's trying to think creatively <laughs> like MacGyver on how to get it out of there without, you know, getting himself stuck. And uh, just all these, uh, all these neat things. Uh, he, he, I, I have this one picture um, that I took. He has a grabber and he goes, it's bad when you have to take one grabber to grab another grabber that you dropped on the ground. And mm -hmm. pick up. It's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> but um, funny. His, his amazing, you always, you always waited for it. You know how he was going to answer and, and honestly, it was a blessing to hear it. And the few times that he kind of said, man, I'm just really struggling and it's hard to say it, you, you kind of missed it. And, um, and I've actually shared with Tom, I was fortunate enough to be able to share with Tom, a young lady that mm -hmm. goes to my church. She's a teenager and she's struggling with some health issues and she's constantly in the hospital and she's in pain a lot. And I challenged her. I said, look, I got this friend of mine. He's out of Toronto. I said, he's not much taller than you. I said, he is in pain on a daily basis. I said, but if you ask him how he's doing, he's going to tell you I'm doing amazing. And I said, not only does that feed his soul and give him the drive to keep going on and pushing on, I said, but it feeds the people around him. I said, so I'm going to tell him I told you this, but I want you, anytime someone asks you how you're doing, I don't care where you're at in your struggle, you got to use the word amazing. So Emily yeah. has been using amazing and i shared that with tom fortunately about a week before he passed and i was so glad to be able to share that with him um he's really touched me uh really gave me an insight on life and i i'm, I'm in pain right now I'm, I'm calling from a hospital bed um i was uh, just diagnosed with colon cancer and they removed it wow. on tuesday uh so i'm in the midst of my healing process and i'm in pain you're um, amazing <laughs> through Real quick here, through the gentleman I work with locally, who is uh, Jim Shorkey, who has read Things Can Grow Rich 137 times, and Tom, um, from the point of diagnosis to where I'm at now, I have been, and, and it's through interacting, you know, you are the sum of the people you hang with, and I got to know Tom real well, and his struggles, I have been at peace with all of this, um, I have been uh, calm, I have been blessed. And, you know, my challenge to God is show me the seed of opportunity through this adversity. Because, um, you know, I'm going to show me where to go with this thing. Um, you know, you, you introduced me to some incredible people. I just recently got connected with John Maxwell. And uh, I said, my journey's not over. I said, you got big plans for me. And this is not anything but a road or a, a bump in the road. <clears throat> I said, so uh, just show me what the uh, opportunities are here. And I'm going to capitalize on it and shine and and uh tom's definitely an inspiration for me to uh keep pressing through so kim i thank you for the opportunity to get to know him and um i thank you for you know all that you've done and just getting to know you and obviously brad and john and everyone on the call you guys are great so thank you chuck. Well, thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much chuck
And Chuck, I want to tell you, I, I, I appreciate our, our very amazing and intimate conversation we had last week and you sharing your, your struggles with your diagnosis and everything. And my friend, I'm here for you. And I know this group of people are here for you. You know, if you we can it. help you in any way, if you need any support, any encouragement, anything, reach out to us. You got my Absolutely number. Right. So we're here for you. Just like Tom was here for all of us, you know, yeah. and, and we're here for you. So you let us know if we can do anything for you in any way, wh whether it be monetary, whether it be, uh, if you just need an ear to speak to, uh, uh, any way, let us know. We're here for you, my friend. I appreciate that greatly. I'm in as thank well. You. you, if you need to chat, thank I'm you, here. Chuck. I thank you very much. Same here, Chuck. This is Brad. Uh, I love you guys. It's awesome. Love you too, brother. Well, Kim, well, Kim, do you have any any thoughts? You know, I I think my brain is in a fog now after the last four days of writing the forward. Uh, By the way, it was beautiful, Kim. Thank yeah. you. So, and, and anybody who may be listening to this podcast, it, we, we, with the Journeys to Success series, we have a volume nine coming out that we started working on before Tom's passing. And Kim Cunningham, the spouse of Tom, wrote the forward. And I'm telling you, it is touching. It is beautiful. Oh, and she, she told Brad and myself, you know, how hard it was to write this, and I can only imagine. I'm, I'm actually feeling choked up right now talking about it. So if, if I get too emotional, forgive me, but it's beautiful. So thank you very much for that, Kim. We really oh, appreciate that. I'm glad that you. Uh, that you guys approve it. it. You know, I through lots of tears, I got through that. And uh, I'm glad that it's going to be published because... I just want to honor him in the only way I know, and that would be with words. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, through this whole series, we did very little editing on these books. There, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that are considered to be errors in our books, and we did this purposely. And, and, and if a professional book writer or editor would look at it, they'd go, what are these guys doing? But we did this purposely because we want the voice – of the author to shine right. through in the writings and Kim, your, your work will not be touched. It's not going to be edited whatsoever because it's beautiful. There, there, yeah. There's number one is very good already, but there we, I would not change a word what? in that. And it's going to stay as is, and it's beautiful and as heartfelt as you wrote it. Oh, I thank you. Hey, I, I got to jump in here. You know what, what Tom would say about this, John, he, he went, he would go crazy at editing choices, and we'd say, "Don't edit. Yeah. Let it the way it is." We, because <laughs> you know what? Because these are from the voice of the author, and we wanted it raw. Now, there are some incidents we had to touch up and, and edit to a certain degree, just to make it read properly. But we kept it yeah. to the voice of the author because yeah. it, they're raw. A lot of them, especially as you know, Brad, is that like the millennial book. It's so raw, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and all of them are like that. And we want it raw. We want it. We wanted to hear the voice of the author through the, their writing. We don't want it to sound like somebody right. else. We want it to right. sound like them. So, but, Kim, I promise this is going to sound. They're going to hear your voice through this. Yeah, we guarantee it, Kim. It's going to be awesome. Authentic I, is what we're about. I just yeah. wanted it to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it is, it is well, amazing. It was. Well, I'm, I'm going to say one last thing here. Um, John and I, I remember when we were working on the millennial edition with, with Tom and we'd send him over the edits and he's like, what is wrong with these millennials? <laughs> he'd start yelling at us on the phone. I'm like, he goes, I have to put in all the conjunctions. You don't put it. What, what kind of, rules are they using and i was like tom don't touch it let it be the way it is they don't talk like us they don't interact and he's like he finally i could physically see him on the other end of the phone just throwing his pens up in the air at his paper and going i give up you know sort of like don't get them you know uh i help i help tom understand uh 
millennials. Uh, that was my job sometimes. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, one la the last time I saw Tom was in 2016 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He came down to speak at a uh, Tony Rubaleski's Mind Capture Boot Camp. And we were waiting for Tom, and this was a big deal because it's only about 75 people in the room. It's a very small crowd. It goes for two days, and uh, it was being filmed and everything, and Tom was there to speak. And a lot of people came to just see Tom speak. And this is the kind of crowds that would come to see him, uh, whether it was 350 to 1,000 people all over the world that came to see Tom. And this is how humble Tom was. He didn't think they were coming to see him. He thought it was because of all the Napoleon Hill stuff that, that was surrounding him. And it's like, Tom, people truly want to know how you get through your day. And at this point in his life, he, he drove down. I think you remember, Kim. He took off <laughs> road trip you know, to, to uh, yep. Grand Rapids across the Canadian border. Hey, how you doing, eh? And, and he gets there. <laughs> And when he arrives, I'm like, Tom, and he got a chance to meet my wife and everything. And it, there was this great moment where my wife, Norma, and Tom were sitting outside in the lobby, just talking, just chatting for a moment. And it was so beautiful to see. Um, but this was at a time, and for those of you who are listening who, who may have been touched by Tom or graced by his presence or maybe seen him, this was around the time when... Um, I think he was on more steroids or, and, and they had fused a couple of his bones together so he could actually walk. So you could physically see that Tom was um, not getting better. It was, it was getting a little bit, uh, for, and I, I don't like to use this word, but he, he was getting a little worse physically. And we took him out afterwards uh, and we all lined up and had a couple of beers uh, to a comedy club. And I never saw anybody laugh with their whole body. And that was Tom. He laughed with everything. And we're leaving. He's like, oh, that was good. You know, he's just standing there in the middle of Grand Rapids. It's like 1130 at night. He's tired and he's going to drive back to his hotel. And everybody wanted to offer to drive him, uh, even though his car was right there. But Tom was um, contagious. And whenever he told his story on stage, we really started to get uh, an inside scoop as to what you had to go through, Kim, because as a spouse uh, of someone who is handy capable, uh, you are more than a spouse. You're more than uh, a loved one. You're more than a lover. You're more than a friend. You're more than all these other things. You are there at a level that none of us could ever imagine. And all I can say is the good Lord above, the good Lord Jesus put you two together for this wonderful, wonderful moment of healing, love, and support. And, uh, it, you know, kind of, sorry, um, <laughs> brings a tear to my eye. That's all I have to say. You guys are an inspiration. Thank you. We were quite Amen. the team. <laughs> you yeah. were quite the team. And I always got tickled uh, when Tom talked about, your dogs and how he owned the front end of the dogs and came to the back end of the dog picked up the boots all the time. I mean, that was that was pretty funny. That got me. I know the last. You know, I've had to do it all now, and I really don't want the front and the back. <laughs> oh, that that's what my dog looks like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Love to everybody, and thank you, Tom, for making my life richer.